We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Hey, smart Christians. I want to put out a little reminder, and this is not just for those who listen to this channel. This is even for those who don't listen to this channel, who may have a grievance against someone like myself. I want to just put something out here, and I think this is good for everyone. Even if you don't um, believe me or like me, you'll at least like and believe these words. When you see a lot of the back and forth, a lot of the fighting and so forth, what you almost always end up seeing are the hurtful, spiteful, and really sinful comments that come back and forth. And if you're not careful, you can find yourself kind of absorbed in it. Uh, I was talking to one of my moderators and he was letting me know, you know what? Yeah, I can get kind of caught up in it. And I just said, then, well, yeah, that that's God speaking. And then what happens? And you turn around and get caught up in it again. But you need to at least recognize who's really at play. You need to understand who gets a good kick out of Christians. And I'm saying professed Christians because we don't know who all is a Christian. And matter of fact, some people may even be revealing that they're not a Christian. But when professed Christians are going back and forth, the enemy gets glory out of it. He gets joy out of it. Now, does that mean that that causes people from coming to Christ? No, it doesn't. The reason why someone comes to Christ or what have you, or they publicly reject Christ, has nothing to do with what other Christians are doing. Now, that can be used as ammo or as an excuse, but that has, that has more to do with their heart. But the point is, though, you could also cause a weak Christian, a new Christian, to stumble. You can train a weak Christian, a new Christian, how to live ungodly by going after each other. The best defense to fight against these temptations to want to get your point across. And listen, there maybe there's some valid points. Someone who has said this needs to be checked or someone who is thinking this needs to be corrected. But sometimes it's not always up to you. Sometimes it's just better to be silent. Can I give you a, a, a passage from the Bible? Now, I think that you guys are not foolish. I'm, I'm not saying that. But even a fool is considered wise, according to the scriptures, when he closes his lips, when he does this, when he's silent. Maybe what you intended to say, somebody else may come along and say it, and then fine, it was said. But now, if it's that you just have to give them a piece of your mind, the Bible calls you also a fool. A fool, a fool vents his feelings. And we don't have to do that. A fool wants people to know what they think. Let someone else do it for you. Let that other person be the fool. Or maybe that person's not a fool. Maybe God is using them. But I can promise you, God is not using all 100 or all 200 or all however many of you. He's not using all of you to do the exact same thing to condemn someone. He's not doing that. We don't see that in Scripture. But what you can do is let someone else say it. And then what you may even find out that the person has said it, they end up getting condemned. You might look at them and say, you know what? I'm glad I didn't say that. But being quiet, no one is going to assume that you are a fool or know it until you open your mouth. As a matter of fact, the more you get used to closing your mouth in these sort of matters, the less that you have to give an opinion than when you do give an opinion, than when you do speak, it sticks out more. But if you're always the clanging can, the empty can with the little pea or the rock in it and making all the noise, then whatever you say, even if it's truthful, even if it's wise, no one's going to hear it. Now, I'm grateful that there are some folks that have actually defended me. Uh, I am appreciative, but I would say I would caution you if you do so, do so because you think that what you're doing is you're defending the gospel or you're defending against sin. Because remember what the Bible says. The Bible says in First Timothy, First Peter, I'm sorry, 315, but sanctify Christ as Lord in your heart. That's number one. And always be ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give you to, or to give an account for the hope that is in you with gentleness and reverence. In other words, I'm not here to defend all these other little things. Our job is to defend the hope that's in us. That's it. We're not defending salacious details. We're not after salacious details. Those people that have other people's sin uh, at the forefront of their mind, forgetting about their own sin, well, don't rest assured. Rest assured, those very same people can be comforted in knowing that God has their sin at the front of his mind. God will deal with, if you, if you would rather deal with someone else's sin, then God will deal with your sin. If you'd rather deal with your sin first as helping someone to deal with their sin, well, that's different. And if someone has done something that causes you to be angry, well, again, understand, number one, God is ultimately going to be the person that's going to deal with it. You're not the, You're not bringing someone down. You're not the. You're not David slaying Goliath. That's not you. Uh, you might want to get a better account of yourself, maybe understand who you are. Oftentimes, some of these very same people 
that want to say something about someone else all the time, those very same people are doing very well without that person. So let me just caution you on that. But if there's something that causes you to be angry, that's fine. But what does the Bible say? He says, be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and do not give the devil an opportunity. In other words, sometimes you can be be so upset you want to go back and check Facebook or, or YouTube or what have you and give a response and then it consumes you. You can't even pray. You can't even think because you're wondering how is this response going to be handled or responded to and what's going to be your next response. I, I can be guilty of that as well. We all can. But let's make sure that we don't sin. Look what it says. It says, he who steals must steal no longer, but rather he must labor performing with his own hands what is good so that he will have something to share with one who has need. Let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word that is good for edification. The insults Let's stop with the insults. You can make your point. You can prove your point. Healthy dialogue and banter, that's good. That's fine. But it's the name calling. Calling people names and so forth, that's where that's where it be, it becomes to be a problem. Now, it's fun. In the middle of all this, this stuff, man, it's funny. It, it, it's fun, and then what do you do? You get ready for the next one. And then you end up being consumed. The Bible says in verse 30, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit by whom you were sealed. That is, if indeed you were sealed. He says, let no or let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other, just as Christ also has forgiven you. I think you forget this. I forget it. You forget it. We all forget it. Be tenderhearted. Be kind. The name calling, and I mean the vitriol. Don't think that because you thought that you were righteous in your indignation that you can't be punished for your sin. We've got this tongue that gets in the way. And when I say tongue, the tongue shows up in various ways with our mouth, but also with our typing. We get the typing things and saying things. What comes out of your mouth is in your heart. And God is going to deal with that. You can bless some, you can bless God, but then turn around and curse somebody with that same heart, which is really indicative of the tongue. I mean of the heart. Because what's coming out of you is in the heart. I am grateful. I'm grateful that I can always go and look at this channel and see what the overwhelming majority of the content is on this channel. The overwhelming majority of the videos and what I try to do, even in life, is try to keep it godly. Uh, because what's in my heart should be a reflection of what I say, what I type, and so forth. Now, there are some channels where that's all they do. Calling out someone else's sin or speaking about this person, or that person, this is it. That's fine. There's a place for that. But again, I want my heart to be shown. You want your heart to be shown. And what you want to do is you want to give God something to look at. You want to say, God, will you look at me? Let me prove to you. Let Judge me according to my heart, according to my, to my walk. And where I'm struggling at, God, I trust that you're going to fix it, that you're going to guide me. But you cannot ask for God to bless you while at the same time you're cursing someone else. Those two things can happen. And I'm saying this for people on, on all parts, on all sides. Let God be God for once in our lives. Let him deal with something. Call it out. If you think it's sin, if you want further clarification, I've even said even with me, if you want further clarification, you can email me and I'll talk to you. Now, you can email me and then go and gossip about the email before I get a chance to. Well, then I'm not going to respond back to you. But if you have a legitimate concern, fine, fine. If you don't want to have a conversation, that's fine also. I'll let God deal with that. Uh, but I have a concern for not just those folks who would listen to me and are friendly with me, but even those who do not like me, those folks who have cursed me, those folks who have called me all sorts of names, who have impugned even my walk, my integrity. Uh, maybe I don't have any. Who have impugned my testimony. Maybe I don't have one. Who have impugned all those things. I believe that you matter too, to God. Uh, other people that have I've been on this side. They matter. And Paul brings this up. He says that uh, this little back and forth and saying, hey, I'm with this guy. I'm with that guy. In 1 Corinthians 1, 10, he says, now I exhort you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all agree uh, that there be no divisions among you. Well, he didn't say agree that we don't have any differences whatsoever. Why? Because he and Paul, I'm sorry, he and, and uh, John Mark had a disagreement. He and Barnabas had a disagreement. There are going to be disagreements. That's just the nature but in terms of being together, being of the same mind. He didn't want there to be divisions amongst you. There should not be divisions amongst the Christians. The division should be to show who is a Christian and who is not. 
but that you be made complete in the same mind and in the same judgment. For I've been informed concerning you guys, where he says that there are quarrels among you, not just disagreeing, I mean, fighting. He says, now I mean that each of you is saying, I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Cephas, I'm with that person, I'm with that person, this person's that, this person's this. Listen, let me just say this. One, as Paul says, Christ is not divided. But number two, do not be at the ready to go and defend the man more so than you are ready to defend Christ. If when someone says something about your favorite teacher, your favorite YouTuber, what have you, and you're Johnny on the spot to defend that person rather than being Johnny on the spot to defend the gospel, you, my friend, are in sin. And it may be even so that you don't have a right heart. It may be even so that you don't have Christ. Because what kind of person would I be to not to, to bypass defending the name of Christ, as Peter says, but I'd rather go defend the person who I'm cool with. I'm with him. I'm with her. That's my camp. That's my group. That's not what God wants. And I hope we all can see that no matter what side of the, of the fence you've been playing. And it's not just necessarily with, with, with me or anyone else. It's just how it's always been all through our life. And this started in kindergarten. But if you're in your 20s, if you're in your 30s, if you're in your 40s, 50s, 60s, it's about time that we grow up and that we show the world that we can have differences. I'll speak my mind in terms of what I think is wrong biblically and then move on and turn it over to God. I'll pray for you. I'll pray for what I see the situation is and then leave it in the hands of God. But I will not, I should not be uh, considered as someone who is letting a certain argument or differences end up being sin. I don't want to do that. I, I would, I personally would much rather that if a person is sinning on my behalf, I would much rather you didn't even watch this channel. I would much rather you move to a different channel if anything involving me is going to cause you to sin. That's how it ought to be. There's Because this walk is not about me. It's not about viewers. It's not about subscribers. It's about giving people the gospel and teaching the word of God and to do so in a loving fashion. So guys, this is very serious. Um, I didn't I didn't have any intent on talking about this, but then talking to one of my moderators, that is Brian Chinschamp, uh, he was concerned about it because he, as he said, and I'm not putting his business out there, he said, go ahead and, and mention him, how it, it was consuming him or bothering him to the point that he shouldn't be saying some of these things and that he wants to not do those things. And so uh, then that's a good thing. That's a wise thing. That's a mature thing to do. Now, some folks might not believe him, which is fine, which is fine. Uh, God is watching him and he knows God is watching him. And so he wants to be accountable to the Lord. But yeah, I know, Corey, they they had it coming. You don't know what they've said. They need to be they need to be stopped. They need to be this. They need to be that. I get it. But let me tell you a quick little story. True story. Guy was arguing with another person and this person that he was arguing with said some just some silly things. The other person was just going at him, attacking him, calling him all sorts of names and this and that. And then it Afterwards, we found out that the guy who had said some things, maybe the wrong way or what have you, this person had a mental issue. This person was mentally handicapped. On the outside, didn't look like he was handicapped, didn't look like there was an issue. He wasn't wearing a sign that said that there was something wrong with him, but he was. How do you think that we looked at that person now? You got into an argument with a person who had some sort of mental issue, some sort of mental deficiency. And you scored a lot of points against this person who didn't know better, who you should have literally been there to help. You know better. You're a grown man. And look what you did. And this person was a lot younger. But he just thought that the young person had it coming. That's the kind of person that I know. I don't know that I would necessarily trust that person in the future to deal with conflict. The same thing could be said about a lot of us. When some of these things are happening, we don't know what's happening in the lives of these people that we're going back and forth with. All we know, all we see is a an avatar or a profile, a name and so forth, and they, they, they've given a comment. And so now this person who might have some mental or emotional issues, they might be new in the faith, they might be weak in the faith. And so what do we do? Because we're strong in the faith, because we have been saved for 20 years, let me go fight this baby Christian. Let me go fight this new person. Let me go fight this, this young person. Let me go fight this 17-year-old Christian who's typing. Let me go fight this 25-year-old Christian who's typing. Uh, let me give him peace of my mind. I can promise you this. God will probably give that person more grace while, in, while at the same time dealing with you because you know better. You can absolve yourself from any of these problems by just simply, as I said earlier, 
as the Bible says, just being quiet, letting some things pass. Again, the Bible tells us that it's a fool who will vent his own understanding or his expression. Once gives somebody a piece of their mind. Don't let that be us. Let's just be godly, even in the way that we respond. Because I don't recall very often God getting upset in the Bible with a person who he didn't tell to do anything and didn't. If he's told you to move, well, then fine. I can promise you he didn't tell you to, to go and, and bring somebody down by yourself because he, he, he never did that. But if you feel like something ought to be said, but you don't feel like you should, you've been moved, then don't move. And no one can hold you accountable. But in the end, guys, let's be as godly as possible. Matter of fact, let's go the extra mile in being overly godly. Even if you feel like the person that you're showing some love to, some grace and mercy to, even if you feel like they don't deserve it, show it anyway. Why? Because that's exactly what God did to us.